people quit their jobs every month of this year. Four million every month just said, that's it, I've had enough. While a new job might create shift shock of being in a job different from the last one, our next expert. So we're talking right now about jobs and studies show that an average of four million people quit their jobs every month of this year. Four million every month just said, that's it, I've had enough. While a new job might create shift shock of being in a job different from the last one, our next expert advises getting out of a toxic situation may be the thing to do, but give it some time too. Dahlia Feldheim here to share some uh, signs as to whether or not it's time to know whether it's time to quit. Good morning. Good morning. Lovely to be here, Steve. So the first thing that you say is don't just quit on day one and say, I got myself in a terrible situation. I'm out of here. Give it some time, right? Yeah. So I spent 21 years in the corporate world, 17 in a great environment, three in a toxic environment. And I always say, give it six months. OK, I stayed three years. OK, and I wouldn't recommend you stay that long, but give it six months to give it your best first before you decide to leave. How can you dance with adversity? It means finding a win-win, understanding the other side's needs and trying to meet them without compromising your own. So I would say just hold in there for six months, give it your best. And if that's, you know, if you then are required to act against your values, that's the time to quit. How do you manage that? Because a lot of people might say, I feel like I'm in that toxic work environment, but I need my job, I need my paycheck, maybe I don't have the confidence to know I can walk and find something that's of equal ground. Yeah, I think the key thing is really to trust in yourself because, you know, there will always be com better companies. I mean, it does take time. I also left. I was a main breadwinner at the time. It takes some courage, but we know that the number one driver of happiness at work is, you know, your relationship with your boss and, you know, working in a toxic environment actually has proven to be the number one driver of the great resignation. So you don't want to kind of prolong it and then get into post-traumatic stress disorder because we do know that toxic environment takes a huge toll on your, actually, you know, it's even more than kind of uh, uh, chances uh, than uh, your doctor kind of predicts in terms of uh, mental health. So I would say, you know, conflict is okay, right? Conflict can be a sign, you know, an opportunity for connection when you act on it with curiosity. But at some stage, the sign is when you're asked to work against your values, when you're not able to bring your full self to work, when you're not able to operate on your strengths, that's the signal that you need to, to leave. I don't recommend quiet quitting, right? You spend so many hours at work. You don't want to quiet quit, meaning you stay in the work, but you leave your heart, you know, at the doorway. Uh, make sure you uh, speak when you decide to leave. You have a conversation, ideally with the manager's manager. Uh, if not for you, then for the next generation. You know, it's interesting when you said that uh, the toxic environment was the number one reason why people left their jobs. It wasn't necessarily because of pay. Uh, it wasn't because of, of hours necessarily. It was that toxic condition. You left. You finally, I mean, you said you stayed in too long, but you eventually left. Did you regret staying too long? Did you regret leaving? Did you have any regrets at all? No, well, everything's a learning. I ended up uh, basically turning my pain into my purpose, okay, uh, and writing a book, Dare to Lead Like a Girl, which really takes kind of all my learning from the great 17 years at Procter & Gamble and then the challenge in three years in this new company, because I do think, you know, and this is a very important point, you know, post-traumatic, everyone heard of post-traumatic stress disorder, but post-traumatic growth is three times more likely to happen. And you just need to operate, you know, find hope, uh, fo focus on your strengths and your purpose, focus on your mental and physical wellness. And I do say, you know, when it rains, look for the sh for the rainbow. So uh, we do see growth from post-traumatic stress disorder. Well, it, it's a great outlook. And I'll just leave people with this, which you echoed as well. And I've heard this from many other people, uh, which is if you are in that environment, just know you can't necessarily change that environment. You can only change how you react and adapt to that mm -hmm. environment. And in many cases, it is react, not adapt, because you, you find a way to get out and find something better. I appreciate you Thank joining you. us today. Thank you very much. Best wishes to you and happy holidays. Thank you. Happy holidays.